Mario Cristobal is off and running. And as we see all over the country with coaches that take on new programs and only have a couple of weeks to prepare mm -hmm. uh, a class and try to maintain it, retain it, try to build upon it as much as possible, it's a difficult task. So what do you see from Cristobal at this point? Oh, uh, well, uh, impressed is the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, yes, you kind of expect it because he's known as a, a recruiter and a CEO and, and more of a player personnel kind of head coach, as opposed to um, like X's and O's and I'll put you in this situation and I'll have you in this down and distance and I'll get you on this slow linebacker at Virginia who's been there for three years and I've already watched film on him. He's not necessarily that kind of coach. And, uh, you know, either way works really well. But as a head coach, I prefer the way that he is right now. And, and that's why I started out with impressed because um, four-star, borderline five-star defensive end, Nigel Lee Kelly, comes out of the interview with 247 Sports and flat out says, I'm happy Miami went in a different direction with the head coach because I didn't like the guy before. That should let you know, Nigel Lee Kelly is a South Florida recruit from Broward County, plays at uh, Dillard in Broward in Fort Lauderdale. He's one of the big time edge rushers in South Florida. And, you know, Mark, we don't really get many of those. If we do, they're like 16, 201, and they just fly off the edge because they're too slow to play linebacker in this area of the country. But they can go down and put a hand in the dirt. It's tall enough and big enough to just fly off the edge. No, you're talking about a six foot five, 260 pound dude who the previous regime was slow playing because they wanted to shoot their shot at the five star of Shamar Stewart and felt like Nigel Lee Kelly was just going to come here because we're the U. It, it's not 2002. That doesn't work anymore. Okay, we need to be building relationships to where each and every one of these recruits feel like we're only recruiting them. That's how hard we are recruiting and building a relationship with not only him, but his father, his mother, his both sets of grandparents, his uncles, his aunties. That's how deep this recruitment goes. And that's the way, I mean, with maybe two or three people on his official staff, that's how hard and tenacious Coach Mario Cristobal has been on uh, the recruiting trail to the point where some of these young men would not have even come to Miami this past weekend. Earl Little Jr., someone who came on an official visit to Miami this past weekend, was said to be written off completely, top 100 player, top 15 corner in the country, written off, signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours to Alabama. He was gone to Tuscaloosa. It was no conversation about it. Now, he could still sign to Alabama uh, this week because it is Wednesday through Friday, so there's a time there, okay? Uh, if he picks, if he signs tomorrow, which I do not know for a fact if it is tomorrow or if it's sometime later on this week, I believe it will be out of Alabama. They have spent the most time. They have spent the, the large amount of time recruiting him and building a good relationship and also – Having some of the best corners in college football helps. Having some of the best corners in the National Football League also helps. So I think that ship has an ability to be pulled back in. But for the most part, I think it's already been out to sail up to Tuscaloosa. And it will take some time uh, to pull back in. Um, one of the other things that happened this past weekend is we were able to do it in home with Earl Little also. So it's a double whammy. Being able to have a good uh, a good rapport, his father played here, and, and he was very open and public about the way that the previous staff treated him and his family as if they were just supposed to come just because it's Miami and you went here and we don't have to recruit you all hard enough because what is there to sell about the fact that you've already come here and won a championship here? You should just be here, and it's it's not like that. Okay, so. That's where we are. There's a couple of names of people who were there. Um, you know, Wesley Besant, who just picked Miami about a week and a half ago, was said to be a big Tallahassee lean. He was going to go there. There was kind of it was written off that he was going to go up there. And it wasn't necessarily because they beat us on the football field. What was the biggest thing is the development of linebackers. And Tallahassee has done a little better at developing linebackers than Miami. And we hadn't been doing well at all. We, we looked bad and we couldn't tackle and things of that nature. So it, it's it's been a nice step in the direction. 
What I would like to say, Mark, is, again, I'm happy for what Coach Cristobal and this small staff, because he had to hold on to some of the people from the previous staff while he's still interviewing and trying to build his own staff for the 2022 season and moving on, 22 spring and moving forward. But in order to kind of still have some of those relationships locally and nationally, he had to keep some of those guys, at least for the next couple of weeks, before they take demotions over to recruiting or to defensive or offensive analysts. Hey, where are these guys? Where are the numbers? Where am I supposed to go? Who am I supposed to meet up with? Of course, he's just going to show up to the regular high schools, but Miami has been recruiting nationally for a little bit, not landing them, but speaking to them. And he wanted to know, you know, who are the people I need to call and talk to and kind of build a relationship and evaluate their film and see if they still have an official Miami offer. Miami had a decommit from linebacker uh, Justin Medlock, who Coach Diaz, uh, Diaz who uh, Coach Chris, I'm so used to saying that, Chris Cristobal over his time looked and, and – evaluate the film and didn't necessarily think he was Miami caliber anymore. So that scholarship was pulled and that happens. That happens. So I'm excited to see what he can do. I know that he spent the better part of the last week pulling double duty, Mark, trying to build the staff, trying to interview while also build a relationship with the current staff and trying to build a relationship in recruiting, trying to get people on for official visits, also doing in-home visits. He's just been going, 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 and that's why you need a worker. You need someone that isn't afraid to put in that work when it comes to a job like Miami. Because I understand it takes a lot of foresight to ever think Miami could be in the same conversation with the Georgia, could be in the same conversation with the Bama. Even, uh, hell, a Texas A&M at this point, okay, <laughs> which is not a bad conversation to be in. You talk about being a top 15 team. Well, there's a reason why those people are in the top 15 year in and year out. It's because they are very tenacious with what we're talking about right now, and it's getting the Jimmys and Joes. And, yes, you could throw a whole bunch of money at the wall and hope people come in and pick it, but relationships, Mark tenacious relationship building is the best place to create a foundation to build off of on recruiting. And, and I think Coach Cristobal has that down pat. 